Kelly, and welcome to the regular meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission. <clears throat> call the meeting to order, and uh, Kathy, the roll call, please. Chairperson Pierce. <laughs> Say again, Kathy. You can't hear you. No, oh, so, I'm sorry. Chairperson Pierce. I am here. Vice Chairperson Byram. Present. Secretary Gorman. Present. Commissioner Moss. Here. Commissioner Cabado. Present. Commissioner Peterson. Present. Thank you. All right. Looking at the agenda, any additions or corrections to the agenda for this evening? Yes, sir. Uh, we'd like to add uh, in between item 5A and 5B. Um, change it up so item 5B will be uh, Miss Elise Badal. She will be reporting on our annual report and then move uh, 5C to start on programs, classes, and special events. Great. Any other changes? All right. Uh, approval of the agenda then. Do I have a, a motion to approve? Motion approved uh, the agenda. Thanks, Zach. Second? Second. In favor? Aye. 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 All right. The minutes from our last meeting in August. Any uh, corrections or additions? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. I move that we approve the minutes as submitted. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, very good. All right, item five, scheduled announcements. Uh, no scheduled announcements uh, currently. However, uh, item 5A, we wanted to make sure we introduced uh, Ms. Colleen Bornschlegel. She's our new arts and culture coordinator. And I'd like to invite her up at this time to tell you guys a little bit about herself and introduce herself. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, get a little closer. Hello. Um, I'm not sure if I should read what I wrote or go ahead and just improv here. Um, some of you may recognize my face. I was uh, working at the library up until about a month and a half ago. Um, I wasn't planning on moving. A, a really great opportunity opened up in Parks and Rec, which was right up my alley, and I jumped on the opportunity. So I'm really excited to be here. And uh, we were joking around about how I was in a golf cart suddenly in the fast lane because the pace at the library is very different than Parks and Rec, and I'm learning that uh, very quickly. So I do have an art, uh, art background. I went to Portland State University and got my drawing, painting, and printmaking degree. And um, I have a lot of experience working with different aged people for um, various art classes and programs. And so I'm excited to bring that to the Parks and Rec Department to um, enhance more uh, art classes and more cultural programming and um, just kind of see what else is possible. So I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I knew I'd seen you at the library. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, Bobby, how many uh, attempts did you need for the last name? To, uh, you know what? It's taken about four years, but I finally got it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Perseverance. <laughs> Always. be presenting on the yearly report. Um, it's going to be for the fiscal year 2020 to 2021. Um, so it's just some brief highlights of the Parks and Rec Department. Um, as you know, I was just introduced at the August meeting, so I wasn't even here for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask, okay? Um, so some general statistics. Um, we had 329 facility rentals um, in that fiscal year. So that was a 97% increase from um, 2019 to 2020. Obviously, we're all aware of the situation with COVID-19, so that kind of skews our data a little bit. Um, but it is kind of a really wonderful number um, for 2020 to 2021. 
Um, in our parks, we had four capital improvement projects, including the Bob Edwards Splash Pad. Um, we had Phase Two of Santa Fe Park, um, Mountain Valley Splash Pad, uh, or Splash um, Water Sanitation Improvements. So we've had some improvements there at the pool area, and then we had Phase One of our Mountain Valley Splash, or Mountain Valley Bathrooms. So we've had over 1.5 million dollars encumbered in capital improvement projects. So. We're doing a lot of great things in our parks. Um, for special events, we had approximately 62,375 attendees at all of the different events that we offered throughout the year. We had 10 free events and six events that had fees associated with them. As far as community support, we had a full-time equivalency of 5.22. Um, so we had a lot of volunteers helping out at our special events, um, also helping out with our library um, and all of community services. So we did great there. Um, we had a 175% um, increase in Facebook followers. So again, that's a pretty big jump. And our top Facebook post had 339 reactions to them. Our programs, we had 3,788 attendees to all of our programs and our classes. We offered 39 different activities and we had over 500 sessions. So, pretty exciting stuff. And then obviously um, we've got our arts and culture. We just introduced you to Colleen, um, but for arts and culture for the fiscal year 2019 to um, or 2019 to 2020. Um, we had Create a Tree, which is a really wonderful holiday themed event. We had 36 applicants in for that event. We also had our Youth Arts Month. Um, we had a new category this year, or last year rather, um, and it was digital art. So that was really cool for that. We also had a new mural. Um, it was an underpass mural um, created by Jamie, um, Jamie, Jamie Schwab. Schwab? I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. And um, so that's an underpass that we had near Roberts Road. So it was a really beautiful um, piece of art um, that I believe it's a cactus wren and then our pronghorn. Um, those were both featured in that mural. It's really beautiful if you haven't seen it. We also um, had developed our art at the center. So we have developed new QR codes for that. And currently, Colleen is working on getting those set out at all of the different pieces that we currently have. Um, but that QR code system was created in the last fiscal year. Lisa, for us old timers, <laughs> what does QR code mean? OK, so a QR code, um, if you look at the image up there, um, it's basically a little graphic. Um, you can use your phone, put it on picture mode, and kind of it'll automatically scan it. And and it will give you information about the history and the background of that piece of art um, or anything else that you might scan not affiliated with art at the center. Um, so it's a cool thing. Um, and that way people can kind of come and do different art walks and things like that without it being necessarily led by a staff person or someone who knows everything about the, the pieces. Mm -hmm. And it's non-invasive as well, so it's just one plaque with a QR code rather than a bunch of words and things like that. That can be extremely cumbersome um, and might get vandalized. So that way we'll have that information forever as long as the QR codes exist. Sign of the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and Are mm -hmm. installations under contract? Where would those be? So the art installations that are under contract, um, we kind of got the ball rolling. We just had our Jenkins obelisk um, that was completed and we had our dedication ceremony just recently, but that kind of got underway in the last fiscal year. Also, we'll be having a new um, art installation as well, the end of the year, but the contract got underway for our flora and fauna um, sculpture. So those are things that we had been working on. But that's pretty much about it as far as highlights go for our parks and recreation and community services. Okay, any questions? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, uh, if you are ready, I will move on to item now 5C, program uh, and class report. Um, for August, uh, we offered a total of 11 programs. Uh, eight instructors uh, led those, and a total number of classes of 39. Uh, we do have a new program alert. Uh, pickleball lessons, both group and private, are being conducted uh, in the mornings on Tuesdays and Saturdays out at the Santa Fe uh, Station Park Pickleball. 
pickleball courts. So not only can you do passive recreation where you're out there with a group, you can now do a, uh, a lead class with a instructor that will teach you how to play. So that's always fun to make sure that everybody knows how to play the game. <clears throat> Uh, with uh, participation by age, uh, we had a total of 657 participants over the month of August. And uh, as usual, our, our 50 plus crowd really loves all the programming that we have to offer here. They made up 77.7% .7 of our participation. Uh, six to 11 year olds, we had 7.1. 12 to 17, 4.2, and 18 to 49, 9.1%. So always making sure that we're offering those programs for our community to participate in. And we thank everyone who does, and the instructors, obviously. For our aquatics update, uh, with August being, um, we had two days worth of still open swims in the calendar, so with August, that's why we're still reporting on open swim. Uh, but lap swimmers, we had 19. Uh, no therapy swim was conducted. Uh, 50 plus aqua aerobics, as usual, uh, 154 participants out there, which is always fantastic to see them getting their fitness in. Um, and then adult open swim, 23. Senior open swim, we had three. And youth open swim, 23. Like I said, with two days open, we were also plagued with rain. I'm not sure if you guys had seen it this summer, but yeah. Yeah, we had some closures on some of those open swims as well. So a little lower participation. Uh, the end of season schedule, uh, aqua aerobics will have its last day tomorrow, September 15th. And uh, as of today, we wrapped up our lap swim, lap swim and then uh, continuing up until hopefully November when Bradshaw Mountain High School swim team should hopefully be going to state. We will be hosting them and their home swim meets Monday through Friday from 2.30 to 5.30 p.m. So the pool will, as of tomorrow, be closed to the public, but we still have the swim team in there. <clears throat> For our adult sports update, um, first year that we ever had our co-ed uh, summer soccer league go, Jordan did a fa fantastic job of getting this program together. We had eight registered teams, uh, 137 total individuals registered. Uh, each team played seven regular season games um, and 28 regular season total over all seven teams, obviously. Uh, top four teams qualified in each division and played a tournament at the end of season. And uh, league champion was Tokyo FC. So want to always thank people for participating in those new programs. We love to put them on, and when the community supports them, we're able to continue it and grow it. So really awesome to see the community come out to that. Looks like you have a couple of mascots there also. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Most, uh, most all of what we do is family-friendly and fun for everyone, so we love to see the kiddos out there too. Yeah. Is, is this something we're planning on continuing? We want to, absolutely. Uh, Jordan is very passionate about the uh, adult sports, and being able to offer more to our community is something we're always looking for. Um, fields are obviously a, a commodity here in town that are limited, but when we can, we always put something new in there. Uh, another uh, new league that Jordan had tossed in this year was our summer volleyball with the addition of the uh, gym addition to the Boys and Girls Club over off of Loose. Uh, we're finally able to offer this too, which is something else that uh, all of our citizens have been asking about. Uh, we had 20 total teams, four divisions offered, uh, 176 individual participants, and just like our, our regular uh, volleyball leagues, seven regular season games, and then the top four teams teams in each division qualify for an end of season tournament. Uh, women's champions were sets on fire for uh, women's A. AZ Heat took women's B. And our co-ed champions were, I believe, in uh, the A League and remember win in the B League. So Jordan's done some really great things with some of our summer adult sports programming, and I can't thank him enough or the people who participated. Looks like a great turnout. Always. We have a great time with... All of our adult sports do great, so nonetheless, it's fun to be in the gym. Uh, fall softball, uh, which uh, 
will conclude uh, in October. Um, we have six divisions offered and it's currently going. Uh, we have men's D2, D3, women's D1, and a co-ed D1, D2, and D3. So that's always cool to see a, a full women's division of D1. Um, there's a lot of ladies in town that are fantastic athletes, so really love to see that. Um, we added, and like I was saying, added the four woman team division, uh, 38 teams across all the divisions, and each team is playing seven regular season games, which is pretty standard with what we do. Uh, top four teams in each division qualified just like usual for a tournament, and that will take place in October. Uh, and then once we get to our November meeting, I'll make sure that I bring uh, our winners and champions in. All right. Coming to our outdoor education and social media update, um, Laura has been doing a great job of making sure that our social media and online presence uh, is, is getting more reach. So being able to report that we had 9,800 new uh, Facebook reach, 40, 40 new Facebook followers, uh, 766 total Instagram uh, reaches and then 26 new Instagram followers is always great. Uh, the more people that we can connect with, the more people know what we're doing, uh, the better that we can serve our community. So she's doing a fantastic job. Um, and with the 7,070 individual Facebook reaches the month previous and 310 individual reaches on Instagram, you can see that what she's doing is definitely working. So. We appreciate it. <clears throat> Wrapping up the music on the green, I wanted to make sure we got the attendance shown for everything that we had going on uh, over the last seven weekends. Uh, July 31st, we had 61, um, August 7th, 100, and then the participation pretty much just went up from there or held pretty well steady around the, the 100 participant mark. Uh, 609 total participants, and, and I got a lot of really good feedback on that. Um, the bands did awesome. We love the theater on the green. We have a beautiful camp. So next year, we hope to get more people out there. And, and with the, the rain, hopefully that will subside on those days that we do that. <laughs> <clears throat> One big program that we have coming up uh, at the end of September that I wanted to make sure that we reminded everyone about was the uh, Run for the Hill of it. 4.6 miles um, and registration is now open. This event will take place on September 25th. And with it taking place then, uh, we are uh, still in the $30 for adults and $15 for children. Uh, really fun run or you can even push yourself to get up the summit trail. I don't know if anybody uh, has, or if everybody has been up there yet, but it's fantastic trail. Laura is also taking a lead on this one and she's brought some new things in there. So you'll get a medal, you'll get a shirt, you'll actually get a race bib. And um, we have, we actually brought in an actual timer now. So whenever you start, you'll get your start and stop time. And if you wanna build upon that, you always can. So it's nice to build on these events and we hope we'll get uh, more participants out there. And then if uh, you guys would like to, or if you have any other questions, I can answer them right now. Or if you want to move on to item six, we can. Good. Item six. Okay, perfect. I will uh, want to, we all want to thank you for the summer that you've had. I think the whole year has been amazing. Oh, yeah. You and your staff are to be congratulated coming back from 2019 and still wrestling with the pandemic Always. and the, uh, finally getting some rain. I know we had to close fields, et cetera. But, uh, yeah, of course. I have to put all, all of that is on the staff. Like We have a great group of people that work in this department and what, what they do for this community, it, not enough thanks can be given to them. So we appreciate it and I'll definitely pass on the kudos. Do that. I, I think just looking at that annual report and the it's just amazing how your staff has yeah. put this all together and safely. Of course, always. Well, thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. Tree Advisory Board, there's no report this evening on that. 
So nothing big on the tree advisory board. I just want, did want to let the commissioners know for the uh, Tree City USA this year, we do have to get a tree ordinance instated. So uh, Nick is actually out on vacation this week. So next week we're going to get started on that and uh, hopefully be getting um, Zach's input on that as well with uh, with that um, prior to bringing it back to the commissioners. And then if you guys all like what we have in there, or if you have any other directives or direction, then uh, from that point we can revise or take it to council. And then after council approves it, then we should be good to go. Um, Obviously, we love being a Tree City USA. I think we're at like 20 years now, so we always want to continue that. And trees are a big thing. I mean, they give us shade. They're beautiful, oxygenate. Uh, it's something we'll always continue. So, yeah, I want to thank you know. Zach for taking some lead on that for us here. Don't thank me yet. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Old business. All right, so moving on to old business. Uh, we are seeing huge progress over at the Mountain Valley Pavilion restroom. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to at least drive through that no north side parking lot, I, you really should. Seeing the full scale of what we're going to be able to offer to the citizens of Prescott Valley once this is completed is, is pretty awesome. Being able to put that, that money back into the community um, with our already beautiful parks is is something that's a really nice site. Uh, currently, uh, the roof is being completed. Fascia boards are being put up. Uh, as you can see, most of the tongue and groove right there in the front is all taken care of. Uh, tongue and groove in the restrooms on the ceiling is all taken care of, and uh, they'll be working on interior paints, rest of the ceilings, the exterior graffiti coat, um, finishing up electrical, uh, plumbing in, and then the sidewalk connectors and then lastly, the epoxy flooring. Um, and that's all scheduled for this month with the hopes of a total completion by the end of September. Um, at the very latest, it will be the first week of October. So once that's done, um, then we will have a beautiful new facility for people to take a uh, look at and then also utilize. Looks good. Yes, very nice. I, I really like the way it's turned out thus far. That's it's a really it's a really cool engineering feat. I like it. Uh, with our uh, with item B, um, antelope spray pad update. Uh, since we got the first one taken care of, we've gone quite quickly on this new one. Uh, as you can tell here, we actually have the pad completely poured. All the fixtures are in, and uh, Exerplay, who's the company we went through again, uh, which is Aquatics, their subcontractor, uh, they have it pretty well done. Um, now the other work is falling on to some other uh, subcontractors for us to get those pieces taken care of. Um, it's nearing its completion. We got to get the cleanup taken care of, uh, some final grading, and then uh, once that takes once that takes place, we'll be getting the retaining walls in, sidewalk connectors, and uh, the last piece of the project that we're waiting for is the pump for the actual tank. Tank is already installed, so that's good to go. We had the foresight to not wait for that, so it's not four months late this time, which is a plus. But uh, once the pump gets here, then that'll be a good thing. I'm not anticipating that. We are going to be able to utilize it this year, obviously, with October coming up pretty quick and trying to get those other trades in. We'll have a second working spray pad as of April next year, and the whole community can take, uh, take full advantage of it. So very excited for that, too. Will there be um, um, like a half wall, like um, Bob Edwards, or <clears throat> some type of seating for mm -hmm. folks like you know, on the perimeter? Yes, sir. We're uh, with the retaining wall. We're gonna take it just a little bit lower than what we had out at Edwards. Uh, what we've been viewing from most of the public that's using it, they've been enjoying the the smaller section of it. So we're trying to make sure it'll obviously have to retain, but it will be a seating wall. Um, and another piece of the plan um, that we had feedback from is getting a shade kind of over one of the sides. So as long as the funding stays there for it, we're gonna get a shade in there and have a bench or two that'll be underneath that shaded canopy outside of it and we're looking at doing it on the uh the west side of the spray pad so as long as the plan stays true and we have the funding there still no other unforeseen things happen we'll have additional seating for this one as well 
Yeah, that's, I mean, it's just nice to like make sure their comforts are met. And yeah. speaking of shade, that Antelope Park is quite hot. I was yes. be mean to bring it up actually. And uh, so I was wondering what in the budget could, in you know, future times, be allocated to shading. Is mm -hmm. it like a subcontractor that comes in and throws up a bunch? Because um, Santa Fe has, mm -hmm. you know, the red shades. Yeah. Kind of came with it. Yes. Like it's like part of their standard, like. Order, I you're, guess. you're talking playground, pr playground yeah, the playground right shade, now? yeah, for, yes. the, for the park where everything you know is at. Um, yeah. It's great, everything's fun, but mm -hmm. it's so hot, very warm in the, in the spring and summer. Yes. So if people are attracted to this, they you know obviously would like to go play there as of well. Of course. But on a hot day, you just it's a ghost town. It's really yeah. unfortunate because it's, it's a great park. You know. Yeah, that uh, that is one of our other directives. So any new playgrounds that go in, we are incorporating shade, just like what's going in out at uh, American Legion Park. That one's going to have the shades over it too. The retrofits are not usually cost effective. I will look in and see if we've looked at Antelope Park, if that would even be feasible with the amount of money to try and get it retrofitted to an older playground. But anything future, we will definitely be doing the shades, but we will look into that as well, sir. Okay. Not a problem, sir. Thank you. All right. If there's no other questions, commissioners, I will move on to item number eight, new business. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so uh, another CIP that we are, are getting completed in this fiscal year, uh, we're making a green space within our existing dog park. Um, as you can see from the slide, uh, in that north quadrant of the dog park, we're going to be sectioning off around 8,000 square feet. And from that, it'll be around 200 foot long by 40 foot wide. And we'll be adding in irrigation and then putting in sod. So then we have that green space. Trees will still stay there. And with some of the other little bit of funding that we'll have left after that, we're trying to see if we can do anything else, you know, toy wise, play wise for dogs and pet owners to be able to, you know, go out there and enjoy more of the green space. Um, just wanted to bring that to your attention that this project is getting ready to go um, and here in the near future you will see natural actual grass not synthetic turf or anything like that so should cool down a little bit over there be a little bit nicer on some dogs paws whenever it's a hot summer day too and uh, we're excited to get that out for the community is the green space separated it is separated yes sir we'll be having a fence in there just to make sure that Whenever we can, we can control a little bit of what happens out there, or if we get any huge damage to the turf, that we can section it off, put some new uh, sod in there, and then reopen it as quickly as we can. For the uh, wear and tear with the dogs and you know urine stains, yes, you know, etc., will there be like um, consistent, like I guess, overhaul of the grass or like treatment mm -hmm. to keep it going when? Obviously, every do every old dog in town is going to be in that thing. So, of course. Uh, <laughs> so you know, just forward thinking. You know, yeah. with with the care. Of course. That's probably you know you've yeah. been handled. Obviously, we've been looking into that as well for the ongoing care to try and make sure that the grass is a little more resilient to some of the uh, animal actions that may be taken out there. Um, and with that, we're looking to see if we we might be able to. Um, hook it up, hook up a tank that would basically be able to feed fertilizer to make the grass a little more resilient to it. If we can afford that, then we're going to get it taken care of and it'll be automated. Um, won't be any harm to dogs, people, anyone, and make sure that that space uh, stays nice and green. Perfect. Will there be trees as well planted like they are existing here? So the existing trees will all stay there. We'll see what else we're able to get in there with the way that the space is laid out. We do, we have to still get some double gates in and some single pedestrian gates. So if we need to bring a truck and trailer in, we're still working out those aspects of it. But any of the trees that are in there, they're going to stay. Perfect. So just a question, how much money is left for maybe... Uh, toys for them, you know, like a tunnel or something, like a yeah. culvert to run through or other items? Of course. Uh, so from what we have projected right now with the additional fencing run of about 200 feet plus then the different gates that we're putting in, irrigation system, which obviously that's pretty inconsequential. We can take care of that. Um, sod, a little more expensive. Okay. Uh, we'll have around 4000 maybe 3500 bucks. So that's what we're looking for to see if we can get some toys, tunnels, something like that that can be affixed inside there as well. 
Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Perfect. All right, uh, we'll move on to our Fane Lake dredging project. Uh, this project is slated to go for October. Um, what's gonna be taking place, the contractor's gonna come in, excavate and haul off material and sediment from the two arms of the lake, the, the Lynx and Rose Creek arms, um, that's right down there kind of west of the restroom um, and west of the grass area. A uh, contractor uh, that was um, slated to go early, we asked him if he could hold off till October, um, but he's prepared to conduct the work uh, while allowing for some of the park to remain open, but we can also close it down if we need to. Uh, with the traffic control plan that he's looking for, we're hoping to be able to keep it open and we'll make sure and update you once we get to that point. Um, and if we have to do a full closure, we will make sure we get it out to the community in enough time so everybody knows how long the project will be and when it'll be closed for. Yes, ma'am. How long is it going to take, do you know? So I, it should only really take legitimately around two months, maybe two and a half months, but it could take a shorter amount of time than that. Um, whenever they're, what they have to do is pretty much build themselves a road to get out further into the arm and then start digging it out and just dumping it straight into a truck. So it can be a slow process, but then sometimes it goes pretty quick. But it, we're slated for two. It's not going to interfere with the uh, with the lighting. Of no, Christmas. No, it will not. Yeah, we, we will make sure it does not. <laughs> right. For sure, no. Yes, that was one of the uh, concerns that we had. That's where we were looking to maybe start earlier, but we were asked to hold off. And uh, with the way that they're going to be hauling the dirt off to a separate location, um, wherever they're taking it, it will no longer be on site. You have to lower the lake level, any? Uh, I'm sorry, one, one more time. Do you have to lower the lake level any? We do, yes. Yeah. So um, once I have a slide for exactly where we're at and where we're thinking we're going to be after that. Um, but the approximate cost of it is $81,900. And that's going to get us an excavation of 6,500 cubic yards or tons. So then we can get that out of the lake. Um, Showing you just an outline in yellow, that's what's gonna be excavated. And then the red is basically the construction outline area. So everybody's in the know on where that's gonna be. Um, showing you what pre-excavation looks like. If you look down uh, at the bottom portion of that, at the link side, it's pretty heavily sedimented in, uh, almost all the way up to that really large tree that I think all of us know whenever you're walking along the sidewalk. Um, and then up there to the north on the Rose Creek arm, that one is, I, I've never seen it come in that far. That's, that's pretty bad. So once we get this thing excavated, which, Showing you depths as of February 2021, um, Bill, like you were asking, uh, eight and a half feet in one section, uh, under six feet in a few others, and then obviously coming out towards the dam, it gets deeper, but making sure that we get those depths back down to hopefully somewhere around 10 feet, that's, that's what we're looking at doing. Um, this is what a finished project would look like, and this is what the excavation looked like after we were done in 2015. So all of our depths were nice. Uh, it was all aerated, all the fish had habitats, so cormorants and some of the other raptors couldn't get them. Um, and then obviously for our anglers that love that park, they were able to go out there and fish and have a good time. So. Uh, with with this project taking place in October, we're hoping it doesn't take two months, but once it's completed, um, it's always gonna be an ongoing project, which has to happen every five years, like minimum, but we try and stay on top of it as quickly as we can. It's just a huge undertaking. Okay, so the reason you're doing this is to make the the lake larger? So we're basically digging it, digging it back to where it was. Oh. And with that, on our, on our two arms, we're obviously downstream on uh -huh. both of the ends right there. And then it heads off at Fane Lake. Um, when we start getting too much of that sediment wash in or not enough area, then that we start to become not a, not a good spot to stock. So then Arizona Game and Fish won't bring fish in. And then the sediment just keeps on coming further oh, in. Yeah. And then closer to the dam will be back in 2014 when we did it, I believe we were down to like 12 feet at the dam. Okay. So then at the arms, we were at about a foot. So that's always a bad thing. I should know this, but I don't. Who, 
Who owns upstream on Lynx and Rose Creek? The there is Fane property up there, and then there are also some uh, gold claims. So I can't tell you who those private citizens are, but, yeah, there are some other uh, Fane lands up there. I was just thinking if we could get some check dams installed upstream, yeah. we could slow down some of yeah. Yeah, and that is that is something else. We've been trying to look for some federal funding because that would be a pretty big undertaking. Um, we're looking in the, like, $150,000 to $250,000 range because that will be the type of funding we'll need to make those upstream dams or check diverters, just like you're talking about, Bill. Okay. All right. If there's no other questions on Fane Lake, uh, last slide that I just wanted to bring up, we have the healing fields going on right now. Obviously, huge program takes place right here on the civic grounds. Uh, Parks Maintenance uh, helped to support this uh, and put it up on Friday um, with a multitude of different volunteers. If uh, if anybody hasn't ever taken part in it you really should it's uh it's a pretty great undertaking for putting it up as well as taking it down and with just shy of four thousand flags i believe it's it's a pretty big event to take it's, up it was wonderful seeing so good. again i mean it's just uh it makes me feel so proud yes ma'am <laughs> it's awesome we loved it but other than that if uh you have no other questions on healing fields or anything else that i had to report on then i uh will leave it to y'all we do thank you. I see Casey here when I know she she's at library board tonight since we had another person who wasn't able to attend that, but she will be here next month. I told her no ifs, ands, or buts. <laughs> oh, you tell her. I will. <laughs> I've got her. her. <laughs> Any other comments from the commission? And I don't well, see I guess one question. Uh, do you know how much um I don't know what water's weighed in volume wise, but will you be placing more water in there or will the rain naturally just fill up what you've dredged out? So yes, with whenever we dredge it, that just gives us more volume. So since we are downstream, when it rains, it's fantastic because we just get that inflow right away. Um, sometimes it does take a little bit of time. Back in 2015, there were a couple couple of weeks there where we had a lot of questions of, is it ever going to fill back up? But it, it's dependent upon what happens upstream and the rain, just like you're saying, sir. So uh, yes, there will be more volume of water able to be in there with us taking the sediment out so what whatever mother nature will give us that will be awesome okay great and then will uh fish be brought in like at um urban lakes yes sir yeah and it, it is stocked currently right now we just don't ever want to let it get to a point where the lake could turn over it's no longer oxygenated and if it's not deep enough that's when we're no longer a prime location because the the fish have absolutely no chance with birds and Fishermen, I mean, everything else that goes on whenever you're a sporting person. Okay, great, thanks. You're welcome. All right, and seeing no public, I think we're ready to adjourn. I think we'll adjourn for the evening, and the next meeting is next month. Kathy, on the... Turn the page over. Bill, just flip it over. Yes, sir. Just flip it up. on the back side. Ah, it's on the back side. That's right. She's saving exactly. paper today. She's October 12th. Over there. October 12th. Next meeting, October 12th at 530. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We're adjourned.